The all new 2050 Super Cab is a Stabe on steroids. We've taken the core elements of what's made Stabycraft great and then turbocharged it. Tested and then refined, tested, then redefined. Stabycraft's legendary toughness is a consequence of the harsh and unforgiving environment in which it was formed. Off the southern coast of New Zealand, 47 degrees below the equator, you will find the infamous Roaring Forties. A name given to the strong westerly winds found between latitudes 40 and 50 degrees south. These seas are more than just a testing ground for Stabycraft. They are our inspiration, foundation and validation. Their ruggedness has acted as a constant reminder of what the boat needs to be able to handle and a direction to engineer accordingly. The brief for the engineering team for this model was straightforward. Build the ultimate six metre hardtop all round. From family adventures to hardcore offshore fishing action, this boat has to handle it all. Drive on rails, dominate rough water and keep everyone safe. Perform like a much larger vessel while remaining nimble and controllable and continue to innovate with new features like the next generation Game Chaser Transom. We've teamed up with Stabycraft legends Matt Watson and Rowan Hook for a Milford Sound adventure to show the new 2050 Super Cab is built to get you there and back with confidence. Located deep within the Fjordland National Park, Milford is a wild and ancient fjord carved out by glaciers over millennia. 16 kilometres long and up to 400 metres deep, it's a prehistoric pathway from the mountains to the wilds of the Tasman Sea and home to an abundance of sea life. Day one greeted us with heavy rain, strong winds and plenty of chop. Rowan and Matt pinned it out towards the open ocean to find us a sheltered bay at the end of the fjord to jump in and grab some crayfish. Well, it's nice to get craze, but I mean, look where we are. I mean, the real star is this place. Oh, and the boat. Just, it was miserable this morning. Pouting down with rain, it was, squalls were coming through. And it's not the sort of conditions that really inspire you to, to go out on the water. But once we got out here, I just got a feel for this boat. It was just eating it up. And then this all opens up. First time in Milford Sound. And just awesome, mate. Like, the boat just went so good. I was really trying to put it through its paces too, you know, if it was gonna, if I was gonna wreck it or it was something was gonna go wrong, it was when we had come out into that chop and I was throwing it into turns and made awesome. When I hopped in the water this morning I said to Rowan, ah, you know, when I hopped in the boat I'm like, my motivation is about this much for going for a dive. But mate, the whole thing just lifted me and hey, we're in the water, and look at that, boom. Traditionally Milford's renowned for, for good, good viz and good craze um, and unfortunately today uh, we're about two metre viz, um, but luckily I've got myself and uh, Matt Watson out here, so managed to use the cray sniffer and, and got a wee nice little haul. We had a weather window that we needed to sort of use, and like Matt was saying, you know, this thing's just powered out the whole way out. We are doing 20 knots into a, a pretty stiff sort of breeze, chop coming from every angle, and the ride was comfortable. We were having a good conversation on the way out because, you know, the hull's nice and quiet, and then, yeah, we've come out to... Some, some sort of four four plus metre swells out in the head here to have a wee play as well and you know it's it's time and time again you can hop in these boats and just feel confident that you know the boat's going to handle the conditions no matter what sort of happen. Just to put in perspective of, of the conditions usually we don't really dive Milford unless it's like about a 1.5 metre swell or less. Uh, I think Windy has us at four metres um, and when uh, when we tried to go out and just have a wee look and a play in the uh, out the front there Matt let me have the helm for a wee bit when you can't see the skyline because you're going down the bottom of a trough with wind chop on top of it and at no part of you do you feel unsafe or threatened and, and you know that the boat's just performing as it should, um, it sort of really brings home why you know why we rate these boats so much and, and why we do come out in these marginal conditions to show you guys what we can do. 
let's not mince words, those conditions are rubbish. I mean, look around, there's no other boats out here. Oh, sorry, there's one other. It's a Stabercraft. After a wet and wild first day, we're headed back inland, but not before taking a detour through one of the many waterfalls that flow into the fjord. It was also a good chance to give the cabin and mat a rinse with some fresh water. Let us introduce an exciting new feature on the 2050 Super Cab, the next generation game chaser Transom. We're obsessed with evolving, developing and improving the performance of Stabycraft boats and we've spent considerable time over the past year making improvements to our legendary game chaser Transom. The introduction of a large chamfer on the underside of the Transom has created a more dynamic shape, allowing an increase in reversing speed, control and manoeuvrability, as well as enhancing stability at rest. It's safe to say the next generation Game Chaser Transom is an extremely exciting development with a huge range of benefits. Day two in Milford greeted us with a common change in conditions. The rain had gone, but the wind and swell were still active at the end of the fjord. And Matt and Rowan decided to take the 2050 Super Cab skyward. And after some more seat time out in the chop, we let the guys back into the fjord to grab some bait and have a little break and show off some of the fishing space on board. This is a different sort of a day today here uh, in Milford. Something a little bit, we're starting with something a little bit different, catching um, bait. And what, what are you calling them? Book books. Book books. Okay, so that's a um, Scarpie or a Jock Stewart. Or a book book. Or, oh, that's what you call a book book? It's a book book. Okay, you can call them what you like, mate. And But they'll be a good bait. I, I have actually used these, um, but much bigger than this, as live bait before for hapuka. Or hapuku, if you've been correct. This part of the world grofer. Oh, you snagged, mate. Yeah, it must be. That's a ball lake. Oh, oh it's gone, is it? Yeah, that's right. What sort of a knot do you use on your connection? I use whatever knot you think I should use. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is that the right answer? <laughs> I guess it's just something I've got a little bit used to over the years, is um, the stability. I mean, we've um, seen how the boat performs in the rough and, like, amazing. But the whole stability at rest, which is right at the genesis of Stabycraft's whole thing. It's right in the name. Um, so even when we're running along, I can just be rigging up. Um, you know, you're just not holding on for grim death uh, when you're going over waves. You know, you can literally um, use your hands while you're running. And that is just, just makes for so much more usable time when you're aboard the boat. I mean, as so often with, with fishing, it's the ad adjunct to an adventure. You know, it's like, um, if not for fishing or getting some crayfish, you know, would you come to places like this? You probably wouldn't, and that's why I encourage kids, families, to get into fishing. Yeah, you'll catch some fish, and that's great fun, and you'll, you'll get some fresh seafood, but you'll see whales, you know, anything can happen. I mean, it is the last true adventure that you can do. Yeah, you can get a, a tour guide to take you somewhere, or you can go bungee jumping, it's controlled. But to think, mate, that anyone can get a boat, come to a place like this, and have what I believe is really the last true adventure that you can have in modern society is get out and do it yourself and you'll see and experience incredible things. I mean, you know, an orca could turn up here or a great white shark. We just want to fish for starters, it'd be nice. Scenery's good, the scenery's going to wear off if old Rowan's um, harpooka hole doesn't deliver. How am I supposed to top that? That's like some Notre Dame shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I swear he's written that down and planned it all night. But yes, he is right. 
beautiful out here, but some fish will be good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> and back neutral. Yeah, we got it here. Oh, it's a snake. Uh, it's a dirty snake. It's good bait though. It's good bait. We'll get him for bait. Just... Yep, that's going to be our poker bait. Yep, sweet. We're good for bait now. <laughs> we are go. good for bait. Yeah, we'll just put, we'll do some. Well done, mate. Good boy, you got us some bait. Proud of you. I'm proud of you, son. You made me feel like I've never fished before. <laughs> what do you mean? Probably call like hundreds of cooter in my tub. You're like, yeah, right, mate. Out of the way. Come on. Yeah, come on. No, I don't now, want to get you hurt. there's teeth. Watch the teeth. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I am going to let you do that. <laughs> Unfortunately for Matt and Rowan, this was never supposed to be a fishing trip. It was always an adventure to showcase the 2050 Super Cab in all weather. We looked at the forecast and picked a rainy, windy day to show you it's built to get you there and back safely, even if the weather turns south. Keep an eye out as we take this new model on a South Island road trip to meet some of our epic owners and get their thoughts on the all new 2050 Super Cab. And a massive thanks to our good mate Dave Strudwick for joining us as our support boat with his epic 2500. Cheers, Struddy.